Hey guys, I'm all back again. Welcome to day 68 in the life of the Galaxy S23. Today I'm going to talk about Dynamic Island on Android and how you can accomplish it. And it is actually pretty straightforward. You basically just go into the Play Store, download an app called Dynamic Spot, sign your life away and give it all the permission to your phone. And then you're going to have Dynamic Island on your Galaxy S23. When Apple pitched their last series of phone, the iPhone 14 Pro, they do only have the Dynamic Island for the Pro series. But essentially they made their uh, camera notch a little bit smaller they can't find a way to make it disappear completely they introduce a feature called dynamic island where you get notifications around the the camera icon so whether you're listening to music or text come in the island's gonna expand and shrink so it's just like an extra notification panel on the iphone 14 series and the good thing about android is pretty much any features you want you can just go into the Play Store and search it, and then you can find a specific feature on there if it's already built in your phone. For example, you want a flashlight app, you can go download that. If you want a step counter app, since you don't like the Google or Samsung one, you can do that. Basically, do anything you want. Just a matter of searching and find the options out there. And shortly after Apple introduced the Dynamic Island features, I'm pretty sure there are a million other options out there. This is the first one I decided to try for fun. I mean, the idea of it is pretty cool i don't think i'm going to use it that often decide to test it out anyways after installing the app i basically allow the dynamic island to work for all my app in the back of my mind i know it's not going to be 100 percent perfect compared to what apple offer but at least it'll give you a sense of feel of what the feature is going to be like and another benefit of android is just the customization you can pretty much do anything you want on your phone for example the dynamic island and we want your phone to look like an iphone for whatever reason you can customize widgets and themes to make it look exactly like ios i don't know why you want to do that but there are people who want to do it just as say that they can't do it. So the first time I got this Android Dynamic Island to work, it's just simply playing music. So I got YouTube playing in the background, and then I swept around to another home screen, it is just resting up there. So in the top right, I got the YouTube music icon, and the left, I got the current music playing. The icon is pretty small though, so it doesn't really do much for me. I got Taylor Swift playing, so you see her tiny little head up there. Or whatever music you're playing, it will display the thumbnail for you. And if you get Snapchat coming in, it will display the icon, the bitmoji of the latest person that sent the snap. So you get a nice big pop-up, as you usually would, alongside the dynamic dialing. It does look kind of weird to get a double pop-up. That's pretty much it, and then it kind of just shows up for a little bit, and then it goes away. Maybe I got to turn off the regular Snapchat notification. It looks redundant to have double notifications. And after playing around with it for a few hours, I actually ended up uninstalling it completely because God always doing but I was interacting with the top area of the screen and when I get a notification that comes in, I keep tapping that dynamic island by accident and after it happened a few times, I just removed it completely. But in case you guys want to try it out, there it is in the app store and that has been my experience with it. I'm pretty sure there are other Android manufacturers out there who probably implemented it in their phone anyways. But I think the idea of it is fine. I'm pretty sure that Apple implementation is probably more thought out and not as clunky as it is here with a double notification. But at least you get a sense of feel of what it is like. Alright, then let's jump into day 68 in the life of the Galaxy S23. Woke up at 6.15 a.m. Another work day for me. And I noticed a giant pus in my leg from the other day when I was wandering around Boston. Had no idea what bit me, but made my whole leg hurt. And this is the result a few days later. I mean, it's still there. I just sent a snapchat to my friend, decided to leave it alone, and actually got better today. Then in the morning, went to go get my implant. Been having a phone in my mouth for like the last six months or so, but we're reaching the end. Finally got a new tooth. Remember to brush your teeth as kids, my friend. The implant process is not fun yet. I shark your tooth, do a bone graft. There's so many steps and it takes months. Then you gotta let it heal, you gotta come back before you finally have the crown on. And it's super expensive too. But hey, I survived and hopefully no more implants in the future. But 
Just another workday for me, nothing too exciting. I did decide to do a few camera tests with the new May update. See if there's any improvement. I took a picture of some text here. First option is just using the regular camera, you just snap a picture. And the second option is a scan mode. So at least when you scan, you can see a flat view of everything. And on the surface, you can read it just fine, but if you look at it closely, it is still slightly blurred out or out of focus. Just in the top left hand corner, it looks a little bit weird. Can't quite put my finger on it, but just something looks slightly off. So camera is still not perfect. You are going to have issues with blurriness and focus the closer you get to an item. But if you're recording videos, it is fine in broad daylight. Took pictures of some flowers outside. They look colorful and punchy. No problems there. For dinner, I got some ramen. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, it is still blurry. If you take pictures of signs, it is okay. But you would notice that on the left side, you can read the text just fine. Ice cream sundae, ice cream cup. On the right side, it is slightly out of focus under chicken bake. Can't really read that. It is out of reach. Sunset video looks good. Recorded as I'm walking to the car. And when I'm around college school, I decide just to snap a bunch of pictures in order to get a sense of the S23 camera and how it is performing. So all these XO text look okay at the bottom and the middle and all the way at the top. Might be just me, but they do look slightly out of focus. Then I took a picture of some gloves. Just doing a quick glance. Everything looks fine, I guess. No complaints there. And then we got these storage racks. And it looks okay. So looking from left to right, we got the Wayland logo. Then it says fire shelf storage rack. You look at that and read all the way to the bottom. I think everything's okay. It is slightly dark at the top and gets lighter and lighter as you approach the bottom for whatever reasons. Maybe just due to the lighting. And maybe all the way to the dot all the way to the bottom. It is a tad out of focus. This is we're looking for it, but it's not terrible. Use a picture of some Duracell batteries. Glancing at it does pass the eye test. The more you stare at it, I feel like the left side, the Duracell looks just a tiny bit blurry compared to the right side. But it could be the plastic, the reflection, and all kind of crazy stuff going on in there. Then we got the Kirkland batteries. Watermelon looks fine. Now we got some Pokemon cards. Text on top looks okay. But the bottom middle under Pokemon, the red text down there is out of focus. Same thing here. We got the top area that is more focused. And the bottom bins are just a bit out of range. But there you have it, some updated photos for you guys. It is still a decent camera, but if you're looking for flaws, you're definitely gonna find it. On the other hand, if you're just glancing at the photos, I think they are okay. It is not perfect, but you can get away with it. And this wraps up day 68 in the life of Galaxy S23. Pretty much just worked in the morning and the evening, did some chopping, got some dinner, made my way back home. Had my phone in the wireless charger unlocked today, so battery lasted me till nighttime. No surprises or big updates there. I've noticed anything else you guys want me to cover, please check out D67 if you haven't already, where I talked about Google Discover and how to turn that off. I appreciate the support as always, and remember to like and subscribe, and see you guys in the next video.